can I then, you know, uh, come to the preface of your book because that's what has made news. You, the book is a compilation of your writings, it's a compilation of your speeches, but the preface has made news especially because you have made a reference to what Prime Minister Modi said when you demitted office on the 10th of August last year. It was your last day as Vice President. And you have pointed out that his remarks about you, while they were very complimentary, also sort of deviated from practice. And, and as you put it, uh, that he, what he perceived to be a certain inclination in your approach because you had spent a good part of your professional tenure as a diplomat in Muslim lands and in post-retirement period on minority-related questions. In other words, you're saying that the Prime Minister was not happy with you for publicly raising issues that are related to Muslims and other minorities. I'm not saying it. Some observers and serious writings in the media have said it. I didn't comment on his remarks. The remarks... But is that what he was doing? Was he not happy with, with what you were saying know. publicly? People read it that way. And uh, his faithful followers certainly read it that way. So, uh, you the know... The book is not about his uh, remarks. The book is about more fundamental things. What are those principles to which we have subscribed since the independence? And what is the institutional structure? How well is that institutional structure functioning? We have given ourselves the basic principle of rule of law. And to implement it, we have a legislature, we have an executive, we have a judiciary. But, but did you get a sense that the Prime Minister was not comfortable with your public utterances on, on minorities and Muslims and, and their problems? Well, it was never said to me by anybody. My public utterances have been there for 10 years. I don't think there is any great deviation. You'll find what, what I said uh, seven years hence or eight years hence and uh, today. So then why do you think he made the remarks that he did? I did articulate in my last two. Uh, my last speech was in the National Law School, Bangalore, in the 6th of August, that was four days before I debuted office, where I said that there is a growing sense of unease amongst uh, segments of our population, particularly religious minorities. And I repeated that with the interview that I gave the previous uh, day to my debating office, to a TV channel, where I said the same thing. But I have said these things earlier also. This is not the sole occasion when I have said this. So you never heard anything from the Prime Minister directly. What was your relationship with him like? Well, you worked with him for three years. No, no, I had a very cordial relationship with him as Chief Minister of the State of Gujarat and as Prime Minister, no problems. But let's come back to you know w w what you talked about, about, about the core principles of India being challenged. Uh, you have talked about majoritarian nationalism in, in, in your book. What are the dangers that that would bring to our democracy? Look at our demographic data. 19.5% of the population of India, as reflected in the census of 2011, consists of religious minorities. Which means that if you introduce the majoritarian principle and the uh, criteria that is spelt out in textbooks of uh, great weight and value as to what does it constitute, are you born there? Do you subscribe to this ideology? Blah, blah, blah. It's all there. Then some people will be outside the circle. Some people will be inside it. And religious minorities will then be here, not as equal citizens, but they will be here on sufferance, which takes away from my right as a full citizen. Full citizen with full responsibility for rights and duties. Is that what you think is happening to India's Muslims? It could and happen. Yeah. Not, it just, could happen. not just to Muslims, it could happen to a lot of other uh, um, religious minorities.